Few people read an Iron Man comic or watch a Marvel movie and don't walk away wishing they had their own Iron Man suit. Unlike other superheroes, Tony Stark wasn't born with superpowers or injected with a serum that transformed him into a beast. He had to engineer his superpowers. And saying he was a great engineer is the understatement of the century. Given the best scientists and engineers in the world, and all of the funding they could need, how likely are we to build a real Iron Man suit just like in the movies? If Tony could do it locked up in a cave, surely we can do it in a lab setting. Welcome to Get Around How. We always have something new in the works, so make sure you're subscribed and turn on those notifications. In this video, we're exploring the possibilities of a real-life Iron Man suit. Are we close to having one, or is it stuck in the pages of a comic book forever? AI. Let's consider the AI in Iron Man suits. Tony Stark's suit has an incredible onboard artificial intelligence, or AI, called Jarvis. Just a rather very intelligent system. This snazzy AI can respond to voice commands from Tony Stark, such as doing research, deploying flares, or blasting some tunes. Jarvis is so witty and human-like that he has become almost his own character in the Iron Man series. Jarvis is like Alexa or Siri, but on steroids. While virtual assistants are still in their baby stages and can only handle simple commands, Jarvis can do some pretty impressive stuff. However, he's not perfect. Just like how your mom can't hear you yelling at her from the other side of the house, Jarvis can struggle with background noise when Tony is in mid-flight. But don't count out the power of AI just yet. These intelligent machines are getting smarter every day, and can now even beat humans at board games and write scripts for TV shows, with mixed success. In fact, the Pentagon's Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, or DARPA, is already testing out AI-controlled fighter jets that use machine learning to coordinate attacks and maneuvers. If you want to see more about that, watch our video on AI fighter jets. Tony is already winning in AI, with Jarvis leading a pack of Iron Man suits to victory in Iron Man 3. Verdict. We're on our way, but still far from Jarvis. Flight. Everyone wants to be able to fly. Jetpacks, hovercars, supernatural ability, wings, whatever. It's a universal dream. So naturally, when Tony Stark created the Iron Man suit, he ensured it had flight functionality immediately. The Mark II suit achieves flight by blasting strong thrust from the feet, while weaker thrust from the gloves help keep it on course. The wearer can reach supersonic speeds and keep up with F-22 Raptor fighter jets. We already have flying suits, like the Gravity Jet Suit, which runs on five micro-gas turbines that burn about a gallon of fuel per minute. Instead of shooting straight up like a rocket, the suit hovers the user to their destination using one turbine on the back for lift, and two on each arm for stability and maneuverability. In Iron Man, the takeoffs and landings seem pretty realistic, with the feet and hand thrusters pointed down to generate lift. But things get a bit wonky when the suit is flying horizontally like a superhero. Without wings or fins, it's not very aerodynamic and there's no lift to keep it from crashing. The Iron Man suit would make a pretty epic faceplant if flown like that in real life. Slowing down quickly, a pretty essential function, is also problematic. Iron Man deploys flaps for rapid deceleration. But a sudden stop like that would wreak havoc on your body. You'd be unconscious instantly. The same goes for those harsh landings. Unless you also have iron knees, you'd be in a world of pain. Verdict possible in very limited capacities. Repulsors. Let's look at Iron Man's repulsor technology, one of the most iconic features of the suit. It's what allows the suit to fly and shoot energy blasts. But here's the thing, the MCU never really explains what kind of energy the repulsor technology projects. According to Newton's third law of motion, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So when Iron Man fires off those repulsors, there should be some kind of recoil or kickback. And sometimes we see that, like when Stark's arm recoils after firing off a blast while wearing just the glove. But other times, it seems like the repulsors are reactionless forces. That doesn't exactly follow the laws of physics. Another thing to consider is that energy weapons don't typically cause shockwaves strong enough to send people flying. Instead, they're used for frying sensors, burning out motors, and detonating explosives. The ANSEQ-3 laser weapon system is an excellent example of this. It's like the beam fired from Iron Man's chest when he takes down the Jericho missiles at the Ten Rings base, only on a much smaller scale. Iron Man's repulsor beams are far more intense and powerful than any energy weapon we have today. Verdict. Unless the laws of physics change, it's probably a no-go. Durability. The Iron Man suit is like a fortress, easily shrugging off everything from tank shells to 20mm rounds. This raises a question. What happens to the force hitting the Iron Man suit from projectiles and explosions? The secret to this suit's strength is a titanium gold alloy that's tougher than either metal alone. 
Sure, we've got bulletproof vests and armored vehicles, but those things are bulky and heavy. For instance, the front armor on a tank is over a foot thick. Gold does come with a downside though. It's super dense, which means it's not great for flying. Modern jets rely on speed and maneuverability to avoid attacks, not armor. The Iron Man suit does a great job of protecting against small, lightweight objects like shrapnel. But when it comes to slamming into the ground after being shot out of the sky, the suit's armor might not cut it. The sudden deceleration from hitting the ground can cause serious injury even with the suit on. If Iron Man were to fall hard enough to leave a crater, there's a good chance he'd suffer major internal bleeding and spinal injuries. Some extra padding or cushioning might help, but that sleek suit has little room for it. Verdict. Nope, not even close. Strength. The Iron Man suit is no lightweight when it comes to heavy lifting. It's strong enough to hoist cars and punch through concrete walls, which is no simple feat. To give you an idea of just how powerful the suit is, the average car weighs around 3,369 pounds or 1,500 kilos. Using the acceleration due to gravity, we can calculate the force required to lift the vehicle, which works out to nearly 15 kilo newtons or kN, similar to the lifting capacity of small cranes. But it's not just about raw strength. Carrying heavy loads can put a lot of strain on our muscles and skeletal systems leading to injuries. That's why scientists are developing exoskeletons to help warehouse workers and soldiers carry more weight for extended periods. The Iron Man suit is essentially a high-powered exoskeleton, boosting the wearer's strength and reinforcing their structure. It acts like a full-body prosthesis, supporting the wearer as they easily lift incredibly heavy objects. And it's not just for superheroes. Prosthetic suits are being developed to give people with disabilities greater mobility and independence. Verdict, it's already becoming a reality. The Arc Reactor The Iron Man suit is powered by a tiny device called the Arc Reactor. Tony Stark created it as a replacement for the car battery that powered an electromagnet that kept shrapnel from piercing his heart. Stark claims the Arc Reactor can generate 3 gigajoules per second. To put that into perspective, that's three times the output of a single large nuclear reactor. How he managed to fit that kind of generating capacity into a chest-mounted device is beyond us, but we're just glad he did. Some folks think that Stark's use of palladium means that the arc reactor might be a cold fusion reactor. Cold fusion is a controversial field. The idea is that nuclear fusion can happen at relatively low temperatures, which would be a game changer for clean energy. But if someone has made cold fusion a reality, they're keeping it quiet. If you ask us, it seems more likely that the arc reactor is some form of a magnetic hot fusion reactor. Hot fusion is a cleaner way of generating nuclear power because it involves fusing lighter atoms rather than splitting heavy ones. The downside is that it emits radiation when it's running and can be dangerous if you're not careful. So if the arc reactor is indeed a fusion reactor, then Stark would need some serious shielding to protect him from all that radiation, especially since the reactor is right next to his heart. All of this raises some interesting questions about the efficiency of the arc reactor. No energy source is 100% efficient, and the second law of thermodynamics ensures that. Even if the arc reactor were to operate at an impossible 99% efficiency, 1% of its output would still be as heat. And if you think about it, that's a lot of heat. In fact, just 1% leakage would mean that Stark would expel 30 megawatts of thermal energy from his chest. Yikes he'd be destroyed in a fraction of a second of operation. Verdict, not in our lifetime. So is the Iron Man suit a possibility? Some parts of it. A flying suit could happen, but it would look very different than Stark's and have many more limitations. And we already have some other pieces taking shape, like exoskeleton suits and AI systems capable of operating complex machines. But the real problem is that not all these things can coexist in one sleek red suit. They're simply too complex and extensive. Plus, the more tech you throw into a wearable suit, the more opportunities for something to fail. And there's still the problem of power generation and storage. We still have to charge our tiny cell phones daily. So a super-powered suit that can cross continents on a single charge is still a long way off. Luckily, super-powered channels like Get Around How exist already. So why wouldn't you expel a tiny bit of energy into clicking that subscribe button?